Welcome to Real World Real Estate, where we will explore, examine, and explain the real process of buying or selling real estate. Here's your host, Stephen Clyde. Hey everybody, Stephen Clyde here, your host of Real World Real Estate, and this is our Thursday market update. So inventories haven't really changed at all. There's been a slight uptick in new listings, but nothing significant enough to alter the current market conditions. So today, instead of diving back into the inventory issues that we did last week, we're going to talk about mortgage rates. Uh, Specifically, we're going to talk about FHA, VA, or what's known as a government loan, conforming and conventional loans. So conventional means it's not government guaranteed, uh, a little bit stricter underwriting criteria. And then we're going to talk about a jumbo loan. And jumbo loans are any loans that are higher than the Fannie Mae guidelines for a conventional loan. That number is going to change depending on where you're at in the country and your region. And actually, different state, every state can have multiple different levels. Here in South Jersey, we're basically at 525,000. But as we go into North Jersey, it's a little over 700,000 and it's different throughout the country. So you really want to check with your lender as to what the limit is for a jumbo and a conventional in your particular market. So, Right now, what we're looking at on a conventional loan, which is a Fannie Mae or a Freddie Mac guaranteed loan, not FHA, non-VA, non-USDA, on a 30-year fixed, we're looking at 3% interest rate right now, fixed. And on a 15-year, we're looking at 2.5% fixed. These numbers are brand new. I mean, these we've never seen levels like this before. It's It's amazing. When we talk about the FHA and the VA loans, we're actually looking at like 2.75, two and three quarters percent on a 30 year fix for an FHA. Again, these rates are astronomical. I mean, they're amazing and, and you really should be taking advantage of them. Even if you're not purchasing, if you own a home now and you're listening to us, you may want to seriously consider uh, refinancing not just to lower your payment, but maybe to reduce your term. I was talking to a client uh, actually yesterday. We were reviewing some um, refinancing options with a lender. Now, they had a $360,000 mortgage balance. They could refinance right now and take a 30-year fixed, which would actually extend their mortgage by about five years, and lower their payment by $500 a month or saving $6,000 a year, or they could cut that 30-year in half down to a 15-year fixed rate mortgage, and their payment would only go up by $500 a month from where they are now. So they could cut the term in half with a minimal increase in payment, and they're, they're weighing the options on that now, but it's a great opportunity not just to purchase, but to refi, because we've never seen rates like this before. I wouldn't advise looking at an adjustable rate only because... You know, five one arm, you're looking at two and a half percent, but it's only a half a percentage point difference over a fixed rate for 30 years. So for anybody that's not familiar, when I say an adjustable rate or an arm, that means the interest rate is locked in for a specific period of time. And then after that time frame, the interest rate can adjust based off of its underlying collateral. So it could be based off of prime or the cost of funds or the cost of savings. A 5-1 arm or 5-1 adjustable rate mortgage means that it's locked for five years and then every year after that it can adjust and you can get a 5-1 arm, a 7-1 arm, a 10-1 arm. The number in the front is how long the interest rate is actually locked in for and then the number on the back end is how often it can change after that time frame. But I really don't see the advantage of taking the adjustable rate now when you're saying 2.5% on an adjustable rate mortgage versus 3% on a 30-year fixed. The one thing we can probably bank on is interest rates won't be this low five years from now. I'm actually shocked that they're this low right now. So the advice would be a lock in the 30-year. But this gives you a lot more buying power also as a buyer, right? Interest rates determine how much you're going to pay on a monthly basis. So It's really worth checking with your lenders, see where their rates are at currently. Now, they they do change daily. Sometimes they change several times during the day. Mortgage rates, and 
it's not going to make any logical sense, but it's the way they do the investing and, and they, they, they price out the mortgages. Your mortgage rates are based off the 10-year treasury. So if you turn on CNBC or any of the financial news networks and you see the 10-year treasury yield is moving up or the 10-year treasury yield is moving down, that's the direct way that mortgage rates are moving. Now, they don't move lock and step because there's a cushion built in there by the pricing department at the mortgage companies. So an uh, eighth-point move in the 10-year doesn't necessarily mean there's going to be an eighth-point move in the interest rates. But if there are significant moves, there will be adjustments made. Normally, mortgage companies come out with their pricing at 10 o'clock in the morning. They give the market time to open and settle down before they start doing their daily pricing. At times when there's significant swings in the market and the market's getting a little crazy, there will be multiple price adjustments during the day. But again, check with your lenders, talk to them about the different programs, check the rates out there because it's really a great way to lock in. Um, I have a 15-year mortgage that I took out four years ago. My interest rate is two and seven eighths. And that was a narrow window, right? I got lucky when I locked that in four years ago. Because right after I locked it in, rates moved up again, and that number was gone completely. So putting in mind that I have a 15-year mortgage at 2 and 7 eighths or 2.875%, and right now, a 30-year fixed is at 3%. So it's an eighth difference against my 15-year. So it's, it's a great value and something you should definitely take advantage of. If you're sitting in your home and you've got um, a mortgage rate that is 3.75% or higher, then you should definitely be calling your lender and discussing refinance options. Now, if you're going to start discussing refinance options with your lender, you're going to want to know that upfront, depending on how much of a savings you're taking on the interest rate, right? Are we saving a half a percentage point, three quarters? A lot of clients, you know, they were locked in at a little over 4%, which at the time was an amazing rate, but now they can take a full percentage point or more off of their mortgage. But you have to sit down and calculate after the closing cost of the refinance, how long is it going to take you to recoup those expenses? On average, again, this is going to be dependent on how much you're saving and what your lender's closing costs are, obviously. But on average, we say it's about five years to recoup that savings. Now, you're going to recoup it on day one because your your payment's going to go down, but you had some expenses in obtaining that lower payment. So we take your savings and payment, divide it into that expenses, and then that's how we know how long it's going to take you to recoup. So if you're someone that's thinking about moving in the next year or two, may not be worthwhile taking the, the refi, depending on what the costs are for you. But if you're already committed that you're going to be staying at least five years or more, then you definitely want to start going down this road and looking at a refinance. It's a great opportunity. Lock in, you know, one-off mortgage rates right now because we've never seen them before and lock them in for a long term and, you know, take that savings and you can either you keep making the same mortgage payment every month, even though you saved money and pay off that mortgage sooner or just apply that that savings back into your monthly budget and increase your savings, increase your investments, or you know maybe do some things around the house with what you're saving. But in a lot of people, that that savings is going to be significant. Like I said, the, the customer the other day that was talking about refinancing a three hundred sixty thousand dollar mortgage, we were talking about five hundred dollars a month in savings, so an extra six thousand dollars a year. Over the next ten years, they're saving sixty thousand dollars. So obviously, it's worth doing. We actually. We had a buyer yesterday who they had a mortgage rate locked in on their purchase of 3.5%. And due to the changes, new interest rates were down to um, three and a quarter. It was going to be a significant change for them because this was a you know very large loan. They were taking out a $600,000 mortgage. So their payment was going to be significantly less with that quarter of point reduction, well over $100 a month. So we made the decision and we worked it out with the seller to delay settlement for a week so that we could make the adjustment in the pricing with the mortgage company and they could lock in the the quarter of a point less in rates. So stay on top of the rates. 
Talk to your lender about your lock time frame, especially if you're doing a purchase or a refi. And the lock means once you start the application process, what interest rate are you locking in or are you guaranteed? So you can let that float if you think the market's going to move in your favor and interest rates are going to fall a little bit more. Or if you think interest rates are going to go up a little bit, you want to lock in immediately. So discuss that with your lender. Uh, if you need the referral to any reputable lenders nationwide, yes, message us or comment below and we'll get you that contact information. We have a great relationship with Wells Fargo and with Bank of America. And we also have great relationships with a lot of regional and local mortgage companies as well. So we can refer you over to someone that does a great job and that we're confident will take good care of you. But if you uh, otherwise just reach out to your real estate agent or friends and family and find out who they used and get a referral that way. If you can't find it that way, like I said, we're more than happy to help you out. Just give us a comment below or send us a message and um, we'll take care of that for you. Otherwise, we'll be talking to you on Tuesday with our normal podcast episode. And everybody take care, stay safe, and practice that social distancing. Thank you for tuning in to this week's market update. If you would like any additional information, please contact us at Team Clyde Realtors on Instagram or Facebook, or you can send us an email at steven at teamclyde.com.